Hi everybody, it's Lavinia. Welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to make a zippered candy bag. So for example, here are two that I have made using Hershey Kisses bags. Uh, one was a small version, one was a large version. One is quilted, one is not quilted. This is the first one I made at our local quilt guild last year. They were having a class on it, so I signed up and I went. So this is a vinyl covered candy bag with lining. So here's the lining and the zipper. And then this one I made at home. Once I learned how to do that, I made it um, quilted. So as you can see here, there's the lines for the quilting. There's the batting. And this one, the lining is, is sewed down so it doesn't come out. Um, I like them both. This one, as you can see, has some texture, and what happened is at the guild, the iron was at a higher setting, so it sort of um, created this texture with the vinyl, which kind of reminds me of bubble wrap, as if you can go ahead and pop it, but hasn't done anything terrible to the bag. I can still use it, so you just want to make sure that you're using a medium dry heat so that it comes with a smoother texture. So what you're going to need for this project is a candy bag. You can also maybe use a potato chip bag or anything like that. Vinyl, you can also use it on fabric. So if you don't have a candy bag and you want to try it on fabric, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So I have a couple of candy bags here. I'm also going to be using a couple of pieces of batting. And you just want to make sure that it's going to be larger than the candy bag. And also a couple of pieces of scrap fabric. The same thing, just making sure that it's larger than the candy bag. You'll need a zipper, your rotary cutter, your scissors, um, and then some vinyl. So I am using this one from Heat and Bond Vinyl. So whichever one you use, you just want to make sure that you're picking up the vinyl. For example, here's a Heat and Bond. This is Ultra Hold. This is not vinyl. I use this for my applique. So whichever one, whichever brand you're using, just make sure that it's vinyl. So we have that. And of course your iron and um, your rotary mat. So what we're going to do is take the candy bag. So I think I'm going to use this one and I'm going to cut off the sides and the bottom. And what's nice about these bags is I made one for a co-worker of mine last year. Um, she um, has a jar of candies, like little Hershey Kisses and peppermint patties and all that stuff. So I bought a bag, you know, because I would go in there and, you know, take a chocolate or ask her for a chocolate. Um, and so what I did is I made a bag for her and then I took the chocolates that were in there and I placed them in a Ziploc bag or a little plastic baggie and I put them inside the bag and that was my gift to her, you know, as a thank you. So she got a bag plus, plus the chocolates. So, so that's a nice little gift idea for, you know, maybe a friend or a coworker or family member. And I thought that was cute. So, and as far as for the dimensions of the fabric, and the batting, because each candy bag is a different size, it's hard to just say, you know, it's this by this. I would just say, just make sure that the pieces are larger than the cut part of your bag sides so that you have that room to sew it down. So what I'm going to do next, I think I'm gonna use this York Peppermint Patty Bag. I'm going to cut off the sides and the bottom. Okay, so I'm taking my ruler here. I'm just lining the edge of the bag to one of the grid lines here. And what we're cutting off is this sealed piece on the side. And as I mentioned, this is an old, an old blade. So it's just pretty much cutting off the sides, cutting off the bottom. Eventually we will square it off just to make sure that both sides are even. So again, for now we're just, we're just cutting off the sides and the bottom. Okay, whoops. And this bottom has this fold here. 
you know, for the for the depth of the bag, but just go ahead and line that up there. So you just want to make sure that you're getting that sealed piece off. Like I said, this is an old blade. Oops. Sorry about that. And so here we have our two pieces. And what we're going to do next is I'm going to cut the vinyl to so that we have that ready to to get set. All right, so I have my vinyl out, and the vinyl has the shiny side, and then it has the paper with the grid lines, so I it just makes it easier to to cut. So I have placed both pieces of my of my sides on top of the vinyl, and I'm just leaving a little bit of room here and a little bit of room here. So there's some room here at the bottom and here in the middle, and I think I'm going to use this mark right here to cut it and that will give me sufficient vinyl to to iron it on let's take that so I'm lining it up with that grid line I'm cutting it there we go and now I'm just going to cut this in half for each piece and what you want to do as far as for the instructions here, and it's nice, it gives you a little sample diagram, but you're going to preheat the iron to medium heat, no steam. So of course you, you follow the directions of whatever brand that, you're, that you've purchased. And we're gonna peel the vinyl from the protective paper and place the vinyl sticky side down on top of the material. And so you're saving this paper because you're going to use this to press on top of the uh, on top of the vinyl. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to cut this and prepare that, and I will show you the next step. So I've cut my two my piece of vinyl in half to match up with each piece. I have my iron on medium dry heat, getting ready. And what I'm going to do is just peel this, and sometimes I just kind of like tear tear that a little bit just to get that going sometimes it can stick here we go so I'm peeling it from here this is the sticky side I'm going to actually put this on a hard surface and place this down so the sticky side there and then just from the center push on out like that and then I'm going to place it on my little quilt and press here light a little bit closer so we have this here and what we're going to do so the paper that we just peeled off we're going to have the grid lines facing up and we're going to place this, making sure that your iron doesn't touch the vinyl, otherwise it will melt to your iron. So just be wary and careful of that. And so the directions for this particular brand, I just have to press down for eight seconds in each area. So that's what I'm going to do. And that will help the vinyl adhere to the bag. You know, so just eh, approximately eight seconds. And you can always go back. So again, uh, just try to keep your iron away from the vinyl so that it doesn't melt onto your iron plate. Like that. And then you just pick up your piece of paper, move it over. Let me see if my cord doesn't reach. So again, just pressing down. So 
as you can see it's starting to stick there just gonna go over it a little bit more here And you'll know that it's stuck to the to your candy bag because you know once you once you peel it up, see here it's it's a little bit off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that a little bit more. Okay, and the vinyl will tend to curl. And that's okay. You just want to sure, you know, if it curls on upon itself, you can just quickly and easily peel that back. Okay. All right. So let's see here. It may tend to stick to your, your ironing board, but it will come up. And so as you can see here, it's stuck. So the next step in the process, I'm just going to let that cool off just a little bit is to turn this over and it says to press it for four seconds. So I'm going to peel this up, turn it over, and again the same thing, grid lines up, and just a little bit, just for four seconds. And you see it starts to curl over but you can just do that there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And there you have it. So your, your vinyl is adhered to your bag or to your side. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and continue on with the next piece and then we'll move on to the next step. Now we're ready to start assembling the bag sides. So what we're going to do first is you're going to take your scrap fabric and you're going to place that pretty side down. And then you're going to take your scrap batting and place that on top. And then you're going to take your side of the bag of the pouch and place that on here. And the reason why you want the pretty side down is because this is going to be one side of the bag. So as you can see, we have the pretty side inside the inside of the bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this excess here. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to quilt and attach all three pieces together. Now, as you can see here, these are not even, some go diagonally, well, not really diagonally, but they're not parallel. So you can use whatever type of quilting method that you want. So if you want to do it uh, horizontally, vertically, diagonally, uh, checkerboard, um, free motion quilting, you can. I'm just doing this simple uh, version here. And you can also do, if you, I mean, if you want it to be exact, you, you know, once you start to sew one straight line here, maybe you can use your presser foot as the edge for the next line. And that might give you um, more of an equidistant line. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it free. Um, just the just the straight stitches, but I'm, like I said, I'm just going to cut off some of this excess here, and I will take that to the sewing machine. I just have white cotton uh, in my bobbin as well as in my spool. So I've turned my pieces, so I just have a slight edge or frame going around that. So I'm going to quilt this horizontally. So I just have some white, like, as I mentioned, some white cotton. And I'm just going to just pretty much just go straight down. Now my sewing machine doesn't have an automatic thread cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pivot it around. pick up the sewing needle and just move it. And as I said, if you wanted to make them 
uh, just make the rows as close as possible. You can use your presser foot along the edge, um, but I'm just pretty much doing this freehand. However, it comes out, it comes out. And again, just gonna go ahead and pivot that around. And then just move it over. And so that's pretty much what I'm going to do here. I'm just creating those lines. So I'm gonna finish up this and then I will show you the next step. So I've quilted my two sides together, as you can see here. They're not even, they you know, aren't parallel. And once you've done that, you wanna go ahead and trim off all the excess. And then once you're done with that, we're going to, you will just want to make sure that they match up together. And if they're, if they're not even, you know, once you've trimmed everything off, you just want to make sure, um, you know, you place one on top of the other, just to, just to make sure that they're as close as possible. And if there's any difference, you want to go ahead and trim that off. So I've cut both pieces and I just wanted to show you. So what I meant about, you know, just making sure they're sort of as close as possible and you know once I've trimmed them they pretty much are so now the next step is we're going to go ahead and go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the zipper so I have my zipper here and I don't know if you recall in the beginning of the video the bag looked like it was longer or just about the size of the zipper but of course once everything is trimmed the zipper is a little bit longer which is fine you know because uh, we will be trimming away what we don't need so what I'm going to do is this is the top of the zipper so you just want to turn it over here flip it over and then just clip it and change your if you don't have a zipper foot you could probably still use your uh, regular sewing foot but just be careful of not hitting the needle to the metal part of the zipper but I am going to change my zipper my um, foot in my sewing machine to my zipper foot and I'm just going to clip this here and I will see you at the sewing machine so I'm here at the sewing machine so I have clipped the zipper to the front part of the bag and I am sewing on the right side of the zipper, therefore I have my zipper foot clipped to the left side of the zipper. And I have the edge of the zipper foot at the edge of the um, that closest row of the metal part. So just going to go, I'm not an expert sewer, so I am just going to go slowly going to back stitch and I'm just making sure that the edge of this zipper is at the edge of the zipper foot Oops. And I'm just going to sew on down and then when I come to the end I will again go ahead and just back stitch And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and top stitch. So this is what it looks like here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch just so that lays down a little bit flatter. I just wanted to say because I am top stitching and now I am going to be stitching on the left side of the zipper, I have moved my zipper foot hook I don't know how you call it or attach it to the right side of the zipper foot and that's just so that this edge can always be um, you know you can always tell when it, whether it's close to the edge or if you want to have it close to here so because I'm top stitching I'm going to um, make sure that this metal piece of the zipper is let's see, 
get this here, is closest to this inner part of the zipper foot. The hole for the needle is here, so it won't be touching the zipper. But of course, you know, you just want to make sure you're not deviating and then, um, you know, going crooked and, and hitting the zipper foot. So again, I'm just going to go slowly down there. Um, backstitch you know backstitch here and then backstitch at the end and then we will sew on the next side of the bag I don't know if you wanted to see what I meant but as you can see this zipper part is close to here and I'm just going down it's kind of hard to sew with the camera in front so that's why I'm just going to pause this and continue on down now to attach the other side of the bag you're just going to take that side and you're going to have pretty sides together because again when you open it up you would want it to be that way so I'm just lining up you just make sure that these sides line up but you're going to clip it to the top oops sorry the top part of the bag here so again just line it up there's that zipper oops and I'm just going to clip that, go on down here, and then just do the same thing. Just go ahead and sew through. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to let you know I changed how I top stitched rather than, than top stitching from the top here. I'm just going to top stitch the zipper this way just to keep it down, and it will make it easier to open, and you won't have that batting that shows. Okay, now that we have that done, I'm going to change my foot to a regular um, press uh, stitching foot, press, pressing foot. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open up the zipper as much as I can, probably, you know, to about here, maybe about an inch away, because I'm going to fold this over and we're going to stitch from one side you know, making sure that these are all even. You're going to come on down, you're going to pivot and stitch on up. Again, just being careful where you are at the zipper so that your needle, um, you know, doesn't hit any of the metal there or plastic. And once we've done that, I'm just gonna clip the corners a little bit just to make it less bulky. And then because the zipper part here is open, we're, this is where we're going to use uh, to turn our uh, zipper bag inside out whereas normally you would leave it open at the bottom but because we have the zipper that's what we want to do and just make sure that's open so that you have that space to turn it over so i just wanted to show you what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a clip here at the end now you could um, tack this you know sew that and tack that closed here where this opening is or you could use fabric and stitch that close so that you have that little area where you know you don't have that opening of where the zipper is let me show you kind of what i mean so seeing this one here you could put that fabric that goes here so that it hides this portion but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to clip this here just to hold that and then back stitch and again just come on down you know pivot here stitch to here, turn, pivot, and then just back stitch over here. Okay, so I have my needle just a little bit over where that metal portion of the zipper is, and I'm just, I changed my foot to just a regular foot. I'm just gonna crank it just a couple of times, and go forward, then go back, just a back stitch. And this is about a quarter inch seam allowance, and again, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch on down. I just have my presser foot aligned to where the edge of the, um, the bag is. Some here, maybe just one more. Pivot that. And again, just stitch on down. I think the zipper is probably the hardest part of the bag. 
I'm not, uh, as I mentioned, any type of professional um, sewer. I just do it for fun. So I'm coming here close to where the zipper is. So just going to get as close as possible. I think I'm just gonna maybe back stitch here and then just come on forward. Just making sure I do go over. I feel like I'm going to hit the zipper. I'm just going to pick it up and just move it a tad bit. Bring it down. There we go. Okay. All right. So we are done with that. And what I'm going to do now is just clip here a little bit the corners just to reduce that bulk. And I'm going to trim off this zipper portion here. Just want to leave a little bit there. And just trim this off here. The scissors will go right through it. These are, I guess it's like a plastic. All right. And now because everything is, is sewn here, but you have this opening here, we can go ahead and start to op flip over the bag. can take the turn so don't worry about that and the reason why I wanted to leave that quarter inch seam allowance is just so that you know this this won't come undone it has that nice sturdiness um, of extra bulk in there <clears throat> and I'm going to take my chopstick let's see in a moment just to help these edges here. So here's the zipper. That. Right, so I'm going to take this blunt end and see if I can just help push that through. These are this is a little bit harder than just the regular bags, only because it has all this extra. It's not just the fabric, it has the batting, but then it also has the the vinyl sorry everybody my video cut off but i just wanted to show you what the finished product looked like so here it is and i hope you give it a try like subscribe and hit that bell for upcoming tutorials and let me know what you think about this and hope everyone's having a good day thanks so much for watching take care bye